This is Lacey Everett here with Minds in Motion. In order to help others, subscribe, which is free, so we can continue building our positive mental health community. Share it with friends and family so they can reek of the benefits as well. I truly care about your success, so I would love to see your comments and thoughts. Today's sports psychology guest is Nathan Max. He is a national level collegiate soccer referee who officiates in five NCAA Division I conferences. He also officiated the Mountain West Conference Championship game and was named the San Diego area's College Soccer Referee of the Year. He was also the center official for an NCAA Division II Men's Regional Championship match, and he was the referee for an NAIA Men's National Quarterfinal. Nate also now serves as the Director of Soccer Officiating for the Inland Empire Athletic Conference. He is about to give us some helpful tips and tricks, not just for being a referee, but for life as well. Hi, Nate. Hey. It is so nice to see you. I am loving your beard. Is that quarantine vibes or what? <laughs> well, I've been kind of solitary confinement for the last nine months because, well, when you're a soccer referee and your job is running six to eight miles a game, the last thing you can have happen is get a virus that attacks your lungs. That's kind of a career ender. So unfortunately, well, in the beginning of the pandemic, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to shave for a few weeks. And then I kind of realized I don't have any clippers. And then I realized I don't really want to go out and get clippers. And so nine months later, now I look like this. Now I look like I'm ready to uh, either be a lead singer for ZZ Top or uh, get, a, get a starring role on Duck Dynasty. <laughs> that is awesome. So, I don't, I don't think my boss, uh, uh, my referee boss will be too happy if I take the field like this. So the second I'm able to, to, to go out to the barber shop and get this taken care of, it's, uh, it's going to be taken care of. But uh, for now, well, I've never had a beard this long in my entire life. So here it is, everybody. Wonderful. <laughs> in all my glory. Yes, there, there's a first for everything. And hey, there's no judgment on this show. So you do you. We embrace <laughs> it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so the first question I wanted to ask you, so you are a professional referee and a journalist, a really successful one at that. Um, and I, I'm loving your background with all of your oh, badges. Well, and thank your you. I, I won a couple. I've, I've won a few awards in, over the over the last few years. And actually, so the banner, the U.S. soccer banner, is um, I officiated the very first uh, para -Olymp official Paralympic tournament game that was ever played in the United States back <gasps> in 2018. And so, Paralympic soccer is uh it's a it's a short field it's um it's um fewer players that uh, it's 30 minute halves and so the united states has a national paralympic team and there was a an international the very first international paralympic tournament that was ever held in the united states was held at the uh, olympic training center in chula vista and the very first game in that tournament i was the center referee and it was the United States versus Australia and the United States won eight to nothing. And so that they gave us this banner. Uh, uh, they gave the referees this banner for officiating the game. Wow. I feel proud for you. That's a wall of honor. Yeah. And then the, that, the, the, the Maryland, that's the Maryland state flag because I grew up in the state of Maryland. So. Oh, nice. Repping your home state. That is wonderful. <laughs> Wanted to ask you what, um, your mindset is like as a referee versus mm -hmm. as an athlete, because as a referee, I mean, it, it's so different. Yeah. You, so it's funny. Like when I was an athlete, I was the kind of athlete that needed to get all ginned up before the game. So, you know, I'd be like listening to like 
Eye of the Tiger, any kind of like Rocky movie music, like before the game, like to get, I got to get all fired up, you know, no matter what the sport was, I, I played a lot of sports, but no matter what the sport was, I needed to get really, really fired up. And then I'd take the field up and be like, ah, come on, let's go, let's do this, ah, ah, you know, and then be like all ginned up and just like come out like really like the, the emotional you know and that's really what drove me as an athlete but I learned really quickly that as a referee uh that doesn't work you oh. you can't you can't do that as a referee I mean like it's it's you can get pumped up for a game but like when you your mentality when you take the field as a referee is you need to be calm cool and collected because if you come out there all completely out of control, the players are going to see that you're out of control and they're going to get out of control. You're being the, a referee in a soccer match, uh, it's kind of like you're conducting an orchestra, you know? And if you're out there all wild, then everything around you is going to get wild. But if you come out there under control, then you have a better chance of keeping everybody else under control. That is a really, really good point. So it, it's kind of abort mission on the eye of the tiger. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. pull in the zen. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. So with soccer officiating, so take the sport of basketball. In basketball, when there's a foul, you call it every time. But in the sport of soccer, uh, we have something that's called advantage, where is a player could get fouled, but you might want to hesitate and wait to see how the play plays itself out because after a player gets fouled, the ball could go to his teammate and they can kick it in the goal. And if you blow the whistle too quickly, then you're taking a goal away from a team. And in a soccer game, there are so few goals that that could impact the outcome of the game. If you take the field and you're all ginned up and emotional and fired up, that's going to cause you to, you see a foul, you're like, Oh, I got to call do, 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 do. You know, you're going to be, you're going to be too, you're going to be like too emotional, too ready, too pumped. And that can actually harm what you're doing. Whereas like if you're calm, then you're just like, okay, all right. So that guy got fouled over there. Now let, you know, let's take a second, see what happens. Okay. Two, now let's bring it back, you know? So it, it's keeping yourself under control emotionally. I mean, not that that's not important as an athlete, but as a referee, it's way more important. So especially as a soccer referee, it's natural to have like a lot of nervous energy going into a game, particularly if it's a big game, but you have to kind of keep that under control and just really be calm. You know, I understand that. I really understand that. To a side note here, <laughs> um, your toot with the whistle is awesome. I love oh. <laughs> the, the mimicking of the whistle. And, uh, there, there's a lot of studies that actually show that the calmer one is, the better they perform. And mm -hmm. this is a perfect example of that. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's a learned process, but from a psychological standpoint, that's what's going to enable you to succeed is having that calm. Like you need to be, you know, speaking from a former Lakers coach, Phil, um, uh, what was, um, Phil Jackson perspective, you need to be the Zen master of, of the field, okay? Because when you're the referee of a soccer match, everything kind of goes through you, right? And if you're out there acting all crazy and emotional, then everything around you is going to get crazy and emotional. But if you're calm, then you have a much better chance of succeeding. This makes sense, and this is wonderful to hear. So how do you stay calm? What's your preparation before a game? Well, so... One, the, the key really is mental preparation for a soccer game. So I will expect, I will kind of, I will like go through in my head all the different types of scenarios, especially the quirky ones that can possibly happen in a game so that when it does happen, I know exactly what to do. You know, a lot of it's film study, you know, just like, just, just like an athlete, a referee needs to study film. Uh, you need to see like 
particular plays and like, okay, when this happens, I need to do this. You know, this right here is a red card. This right here is a yellow card. This right here is a foul, but not a card. You know, there are a myriad of different types of scenarios that can happen in a game and you need to know exactly what to do to be able to reach the higher levels. For example, we have something in soccer called like denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity, where if a player uh, is uh, essentially one-on-one with the goalkeeper and they're outside the penalty area and they get taken down, it's a, it's a red card. Right. And this play probably, this, you know, it, it happens maybe one out of every, I don't know, 20 games or so, but maybe 30. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But, you know, this is one of the, like, this scenario trips up a lot of referees when it happens. Mm. I will make it a point sometimes to really, like, think about, like, okay, don't forget about denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. And I'll think in my head, I'll envision the different types of plays that can happen. That kind of personal psychology, uh, these, these psychological tricks that of preparation that will that will enable you to like become successful when you know the the shit hits the fan essentially absolutely it's it's um i I noticed with referees it's so intricate down to the inch like you described where's their foot and it can be really tedious and you almost have to envision what's going to happen and all the different scenarios that could happen. It's, it's called kinesthetic visualization. Actually, I did a lot of research on it in my undergrad and a lot of athletes do it. So it's really nice to see that referees do have to do that as well. I mean, you are in charge. You Mm -hmm. have the coaches mad at you or happy at you, the, the athletes mad at you or having, you know, fan, oh, yeah. you're, you're the center of attention. You are in charge. So how do you, how do you focus when, when chaos is breaking loose? Well, the thing about a soccer game is a lot of soccer games finish zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, two, one. So there's a lot more pressure on the referee than maybe in some other sports. In soccer, one major decision can determine the, compl- the outcome of the game. So the possibility that players and coaches are going to lose it is increases exponentially. <laughs> because if you, like, you call a penalty kick and it's zero, zero, well, chances are that penalty kick, is, that, that decision is going to determine who wins and who loses. You call a foul right outside the penalty area and give a team a a dangerous free kick and they score. That decision could determine who wins or who loses. So you're going to have a a lot of pissed off people at you a lot of the time. Now, when it comes to um, players and coaches kind of getting persnickety, so to speak. Um, I have a lot of different strategies to deal with that. And it's all cycle, you know, it's one of, one of my jokes, uh, one of the things I say to like younger referees when we're about to take the field is like, hey, this is psychological warfare out here. Okay. Oh. You know, this, you know, the That's psychology of refereeing, it's, is re- people don't really understand just how important it is to being successful because anybody can, it gets to a point where like anybody can see this is a foul. That's a foul. This is a foul. That's a foul. Okay. Then to get to the next level, you have to get in people's heads and build a rapport and understand how to win them over. That is the psychology. So I have, I have, some tricks of the trade that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you. Yes, tell us, tell us. This is great. All right, players and coaches, when they're getting up, when people are getting mad at you, and this isn't just in a soccer game, you know, this, you can, you can translate into, into your relationships and, and, and life in general. Mm-hmm. When people are angry at you. There is generally a reason why 
they're upset. And as a referee to be successful, you have to learn how to empathize with those who you're officiating. When I, and when I say that, I mean, you have to put yourself in their shoes. So let's start with a player. I, if, if you've got a player who's in your ear and won't stop and is constantly arguing, there's a reason why they're upset. And you can't just, a lot of referees will try and just bl- ignore the player or blow them off, but that will only get them to escalate their behavior. What is more successful is if when, let's say, when you haven't, you don't always have an opportunity because the game's going on, but like, you know, maybe during a substitution or if you have an opportunity, you pull the player aside and say, hey, talk to me. I'll pull them aside and I'll say, hey, man, all this screaming and yelling at me, this isn't helping me. Here's what I need from you. I understand you're upset. And I understand there's something that's making you upset, but I'm not seeing it. So tell me what, tell me what the problem is so that I can, so that I can spot it. I can't, I can't change what's already happened, but what I can do is I can be better from here on in. So tell me what is upsetting you? What's the problem? I bet that really gets them. They will calm down immediately because they will understand that they're being heard and they're being listened to. Like, okay, well, so-and-so behind the play is grabbing me. So-and-so is doing this. So-and-so is giving me the business. So, whatever they say. And then, I, and then I'll respond, okay, now I know. Now I'm going to look for it. I'm going to pay extra attention to what's going on around you so that I can try and catch this. And then – well, then the key is, then you got to follow up. You can't say you're going to do it and then not do it. And then, so, you know, when then that, the, the, the aggrieved player is, is around the ball and the, you know, I'll, I'll either, I'll look for it. I'll either catch it and give you one, or I'll, you know, <laughs> or, you know, or I'll, I'll, or I'll make a point and be like, say, say, I'm like, no, 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 nothing. Not, there's nothing there. That's not a foul. That's okay. That's fair. We're going to keep playing, you know, I'll, but I'll make it a point to have the, a presence around the individual that feels like I'm not paying attention. So at the very least, they know, they know that I'm paying attention to them now. And generally that will calm them down. Now here's another situation. Um, let's say a player gets whacked and I just completely miss it. You know, I make mistakes just like everybody makes mistakes. So sometimes somebody will get really whacked and I'll miss it. And then, and I'll just, and, and they'll, rah, 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 rah. and I'll be like, and I'll be like, I'll say, I'll say, Oh, I'll, I'll literally say, I'll be like, I'm sorry. I completely missed it. You know, I'm not saying that nothing happened to you. I'm just saying I didn't see it. So I can't call it. I'm, and, and I'll, I'll like, I probably messed that up and I'm sorry. And I'm going to try and do better. And what are you going to say to somebody who says that the vast majority of people are going to be, they're going to accept that. And they'll be like, okay, thank you. The part where you say, I will do better. I will do better. Seems yeah. like it's key because just it's saying. Like, it's like what Master Yoda says. Don't try, do. <laughs> yes. Yes, Yoda. Thank you, Yoda, for that because it's, it's very prevalent. So, but going, going back to, um, you know, going back to the part where, you know, I tell players, you know, give, let, give me the information that I need. To, so, that I can, so that I can do my job better. It kind of goes back to that famous scene in, in the movie, Jerry Maguire, where Tom Cruise is telling Cuba Gooding Jr., help me help you. you know, someone's screaming and yelling at me. I'm like, this isn't helping me. Give, me. give me information that I can use in a calm manner, and then I can help you. Help me help you. Yes, so. I can see how that would help. Help me help you. I mean, how else are you able to help them unless Mm -hmm. they talk? And I also really liked the part when you described this, you said, this isn't helping me. Mm -hmm. I can really see how that would get them to take a step back Mm -hmm. and go, Oh, okay. And for you to say to them, I will do better. Mm -hmm. I can see how that would be very encouraging to them and very, Mm -hmm. I can see through what you say, how that would build a strong rapport. Mm -hmm. 
and make your job as a ref a lot easier and go Mm -hmm. smoother. Now, coaches, dealing with the coaches can be a little trickier because these guys have a lot on the line. Their job is a very results-based job. So if they don't win, they lose these very lucrative jobs. One call here or there can be the difference between them making the NCAA tournament and them not going to the postseason. So then that puts a lot of pressure on you. Exactly. These, so when dealing with the coaches, it is critical when you're officiating at a higher level where there is such a financial impact on the individuals who are involved in the game is you have to understand, again, from a psychological standpoint, you have to put yourself in their shoes and understand why they are so stressed. Okay. You know, you have to say things like, Hey, look, this game is just as important to me as it is to you. And you have to make them believe that Mm -hmm. from their perspective, you know, you're just some, you're, you're, you know, you're just some guy who's out there blowing the whistle. You know, you, this is all a part of building rapport with these guys. Um, and I've got a lot of different strategies for that, uh, that I'll get into as well. Um, so with during, during the game, the on-field stuff. So again, when you make a mistake and it's going to happen, when you make a mistake, you need to own up to it as quickly as possible. Yes, and owning up to your mistake really sounded like she almost respected you more for doing mm-hmm. so instead of fighting back and forth or, well, he, sh- he said, she said, mm-hmm. and doing that whole circle. Being honest and being human mm-hmm. and saying, I messed up and owning. Right. And, and it sounds know, like that helps your job as a ref. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the thing with the coaches is you can use a lot of the same strategies with them as you will with the players. And I'll, a lot of times I'll use the phrase, I'll look for it. I'm not telling them I'm going to do anything. I'm just essentially, it's essentially a way of, of, of expressing, I hear you. I've, I'm giving, I'm valuing what you're saying. I'm not blowing you off. And, uh, and now we're going to proceed with, you know, so. I'll look for it. And it's also, it's safe. You know, it's a safe mm-hmm. word. Phrase, it's a psychological trick with the, the players too. You know, hey, referee, referee, he's grabbing me. Okay, I'll look for it. Okay, great telling them you're going to call the foul next time. You're just saying that you're going to look, but it's, it's, you know, this is what I'm talking about when it's psychological warfare, you know, you, you, over the years, when you get more experience, you learn these, like people tell you the same things over and over again. And so you learn like immediate canned responses that work, you know, a lot of like the growing process is like learning what works and learning what doesn't. Here's what, here's what does work. Hey, I understand where you're coming from. And I'm going to try and, you know, I'm going to do better. You know, that works. You know? It sounds like it works. And it sounds like you mean it too. It's another psychological trick. Ooh. And this, this one comes straight from uh, the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And it's, uh, it's a trick that a lot of salespeople use. But I, use I, 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 I learned this from, a, from a, a salesman who became a referee is – Try to learn as many names as possible, first names. And a lot of times, like, when you get to be a referee at a higher level, you see that the the top players, you see them over and over and over again. I mean, the best men's player for San Diego State, I've been refereeing him since he was 15. You know, I've been refereeing him for years. Um, The coaches, learn their names, you know. Um, People like to hear their names. It's it's a psychological trick. So – it, it, you, again, another way to build rapport. You, they have um, the co- the college coaches. They show up to these recruiting events. Uh, they're these massive youth soccer tournaments. Back when we had that sort of thing, uh, and they usually take place in San Diego. And they show up and they watch players, and they're there for recruiting. And I like to go referee at these events. Not really, not so much to referee the games, but I use these events as an opportunity to kind of hobnob and build rapport with all these coaches, 
all these like NCAA Division I coaches who I know I'm going to see during the season. Like, for example, so the psychological game of the referee doesn't start when you blow the whistle and it doesn't end when the game's over. Bizarre. How much a referee has to build rapport Mm -hmm. with the players and the coaches and everyone around them in order to have a smooth game. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. And just like the little things like you're mentioning, saying their name or um, remembering them from the last game. So um, all these university teams, all these college soccer teams, they all have websites. And on the websites, they all have bios. Learn all this information about every single player. So when I have a game the night before, I'll go through all the bios and I'll learn information about the players. So a couple examples. I used to live in France, so I speak French fluently. Whenever I see that there's a player on one of the teams from France or a French speaking country, like for example, um, Senegal, uh, the first thing I will do is, uh, you know, when I have the opportunity, when I see him like on the field is I'll shoot, I'll just start speaking French to him. And they will be blown away by the fact that the referee is speaking French. And that, that player will be on my side, not just for the rest of the game, but every future game. Get them on your side. Right. The players are, you know, you shoot a little French, the, the, the players will be like, oh, putain, l'arbitre, il parle français, je crois pas. Comment ça va? Comment ça va? Oui, ça va bien, et toi? Woo! <laughs> Everyone can learn two things from this. One, looking up the players and looking up, you know, the company and what team and such goes for sports, but it also goes for jobs. So I hope mm-hmm. everyone's really focusing because this is how you apply for jobs too, you know, when you're going in oh, for an interview, you got to know what you're in. Knowledge is power. Mm-hmm, knowledge is power. It, it's psychological right there before the game even started the night before the game days leading up to the game i was studying and then i took that i took the homework that i did and then i used it to to psychologically win these players over and it worked it almost always works and that's the difference between somebody who who really you know just just kind of goes out and does youth, does youth games and somebody who referees at a top level. You see who the players are who are scoring all the goals, who the players are who are dishing all the assists. You see who the players are who are committing all the fouls. You see who the players are who are one yellow card away from getting suspended. You know, if I see, if I'm looking at the stats and I see there's a player who's got four yellow cards and the fifth one he gets suspended for a game, I can use that. I can, I can, I can use that psychologically. I can be like, hey, man, look, you're one yellow card away from getting suspended. I don't want to be the guy. I don't want to be the guy that knocks you out of next week's game. Okay, so, you know, again, help me help you here. Uh, Yeah. And, you know, then the player then knows, okay, this guy's actually looking out for me. Mm -hmm. And then it it changes their entire mentality and their entire way of seeing you and dealing with you. And, and makes your job easier and ena- it enables you to be more successful. Tactics, these tactics that you're describing are great. These, I mean, I feel like I'm in this secret little referee 101 <laughs> round table right now because I, I can use these for life. I mean, oh, well, I, I, athlete or not. I, like, I, it, it, becoming a referee and learning, it, it has made my relationships better. Not all of them. I'm still, I still live here all by myself. So it hasn't been a cure-all for everything, but <laughs> still, still working on a couple things. But uh. <laughs> I, can, I can understand that. And you seem so genuine. So I'm sure when you're building rapport, you actually want to. And it's fun to talk to people, you know? Oh, yeah. And well, um, It's just human nature. It's just human nature that you want people to like you. And when you're a referee, a lot of people are predisposed into not liking you. Wow. And that is truly impeccable that you can just 
have these relationships with everyone where they just adore you and they're, oh, Nate, the referee's back, you know, it's him, yes, we got him. You know, you're that one, you're, the, you're that one because of all the tricks of the trade that you have. Yeah, it's, you know, it, ha and it hasn't always been this way, I can assure you. In the early, in the early days, it was a lot of trial and error and, try, and, and, and testing out what works and what doesn't. And, and over the years, I've, I've, I've kind of honed all these psychological tricks of the trade to kind of figure out, okay, this is what works for me and, and this, is what, this is what I'm going to do. Yes, trial and error. One of the things that refereeing has, has done for me um, through learning all these psychological uh, tricks and learning how to deal with people, you know, in, I have become a better person. Be being, becoming a better referee has made me a better person because learning how to communicate effectively with players and coaches and, and with, with people it has translated into me being able to communicate more effectively in my interpersonal relationships, you know, off the field, not as a soccer referee. So um, I really do feel like I am a better individual. I'm a much better person thanks to everything that I've learned over the years. For it. I can 100% understand that. It's amazing how sports can parallel with life and work and school and other things and relationships. It's, it's pretty interesting how much sports can teach you about just being a human and mm -hmm. the hard work and the perseverance that goes into it. I mean, oh, I, I could go on, but that, mm -hmm. that was wonderfully said. Well, thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you so, so much, Nate, for doing this. I feel so grateful that I got to oh. see my pleasure. I wish you the absolute best in the future. And oh, once oh. this whole thing is over, to get back on the field, oh. healthy, strong. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Nate. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. Thank you. This is Lacey Everett here with Minds in Motion. In order to help others, subscribe, which is free, so we can continue building our positive mental health community. Share it with friends and family so they can reek of the benefits as well. I truly care about your success, so I would love to see your comments and thoughts.